And uh, talking about the, the GDPR, I don't profess to be a lawyer at all and trying to actually help you uh, start a GDPR program uh, as you should indeed. And uh, this is what I propose to, uh, to explore. The people dimension, the supply chain dimension, some organizational consideration and starting off a successful GDPR program to get you on your way for May 2018. Not forgetting, of course, that the most important step is to get a good lawyer to Jonathan's point. <laughs> so, the people dimension, let's have a look at this. By the end of 2016, there'll be 77.2 billion people. At the same time, 1.3 billion people, or 30% of the population, will actually work routinely, remotely. Added to that, there'll be 6.4 billion connected things. See the landscape. So, the more, the faster we connect, digitize, transform, and innovate, well, basically, criminals do exactly the same thing. So data is, in fact, the new money. So we have so many data breaches, frequent losses, and everything else. The digital age, undeniably, has eroded privacy. And it's redefined it as well. I mean, do we understand the concept of privacy anymore? So, for example, very recently, you know, eight, 98 million accounts on, uh, on the R Russian uh, website rambler.ru hacked. Lifeboat, gaming forum website, 7 million accounts leaked. Last FM, as you've seen in the last couple of weeks, 43 million. And perhaps a more embarrassing one in here, 800,000 users on browsers. So this is where we are. There's lots of data about. So there's more data. It's easier to get. It is therefore cheaper for criminals. So uh, and if you needed any more proof, let's have a look at this. cybersecurity lately, largely because of what happened to Sony. Companies and individuals are more concerned about the safety and privacy of their information than ever. President Obama has unveiled a number of new proposals this week to crack down on hackers, and he plans to address this in the State of the Union speech on Tuesday. And it's great that the government is working on this, but the truth of the matter is we need to do a better job of protecting ourselves. You know, the most popular password in the United States is password123. And as long as we're, as long as that's the case, we're vulnerable. So today we sent a camera out on the Hollywood Boulevard to help people by asking them to tell us their password. And <laughs> this is how that went. We're talking about cybersecurity today and how safe people's passwords are. What is one of your online passwords currently? It is my dog's name and the year I graduated from high school. Oh, what kind of dog do you have? I have a Chihuahua Papillon. And what's his name? Jameson. Jameson. <laughs> where did you go to school? Um, I went to school back in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. What school? Uh, Hipfield Area Senior High School. Oh, when did you graduate? In 2009. Oh, great. <laughs> it's like my cat's name and then just like a random number. OK. But... And so you had this cat for a while? Yeah, she's my childhood pet. Aw. And what's her name? Her name is Jolie. Jolie. Mm -hmm. So like a password of yours would be Jolie and then a number. Yeah. Like number one? Uh, like by birthday. Oh, when is your birthday? Uh, June 12th. Oh, nice. Uh, you were born? Uh, 95. Oh, great. So Jolie, 6, 12, Nine. 95. Yes. Got it. So you mean to give my password right now? No, I cannot do that. But you, we all want to know what it is so we can tell you if it's strong or not. Oh, my goodness. Um, um, <laughs> let me think. OK, one is Tel Aviv. Yeah. Four, six, eight, and then Israel. It's it's only three, but it's you know it's uh, for me it's strong enough. <laughs> one, two, three, four. Gemma. One, two, three. Spell G E M M A. Most of them are Italian. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So like. Like, what's a good Italian passport? Uh, my grandma's name. What's your grandma's uh, name? Uh, Maria. Maria. So Maria is your password? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Well the important thing is he went they might have a terrible left. 
right. These, these are not bad people. I mean, they're people you employ. This is human nature. So let's, let's look at the personal data context of the GDPR. So we've got, uh, in the, the concept of personal data has actually been redefined slightly in the GDPR. Is now it includes things as uh, location ID and so on and so forth, uh, genetic, mental, economic, so we can think about biometrics and, and, and such likes. And we can also see the implications on things like Pokemon Go, for example. So personal data has been slightly redefined. It's, uh, it's more expensive than the original definition of the GDPR, Jonathan mentioned consent earlier on, so, so I won't dwell on that, there's change in there. And there's uh, processing, so let's not forget, automated um, uh, manual, it includes everything in relation to data, but uh, also in terms of the adaptation or alteration. So it's a bit more comprehensive in terms of what you actually do with data uh, and disseminating, making it available combination, erasure, disposal, all those good things that we already know about in the current uh, DPA. So that's the personal data context, uh, context of the, the GDPR. So let's look at the supply chain dimension. So essentially, this has become uh, an even more uh, crucial problem because of the cloud. Everybody wants to move, to move to the cloud for very, very good reasons. Price, flexibility, mobile working, as we've seen earlier on, uh, working independently of specific machines or locations, and uh, uh, for those in, uh, in, in retail or service industry, uh, a desire for that holy grail of omnichannel delivery. So digital transformation itself actually uh, creates modern behaviors and, and incre increase the reliance on cloud services and other third-party managed services. I mean, we now live, live in what we call the API economy. And you could see the implications of this, running from the jurisdiction, access, data ownership, tenancy, and so on and so forth, which you're all already familiar with. So cloud is exacerbating the problem. The reality of things is that 75% of cloud applications are not ready for the EU GDPR. So think about the supply chain here. So if we look at uh, the context, so we've got three things I would like you to look about. The context of the controller, basically the accountable entity. <coughs> the concept of the processor that processes the data on behalf of the controller. And then we have the accountability. Controllers must be able, essentially, to know everything, as Jonathan will attest. It is their responsibility, uh, and they must have policies in place uh, so that they, all of their ac activities in relation to personal data actually comply with the standard. So, and therefore, you know, we have to look at the, the landscape challenges. So we have several challenges. The first one is environmental. Environmental cha challenge, as we've said earlier on, we're all digital, hyper-connected, always on, and so on and so forth. In information security terms, there is no perimeter anymore. And if you think there is, you're actually fooling yourselves. It doesn't exist. We have an extended supply chain, and people are obviously the weakest link, as we've seen. So first is the environmental challenge. Secondly is the criminal challenge. The criminal challenge is that criminal, uh, criminals evolve rapidly. They evolve rapidly with technology, they evolve rapidly with the environment. They actually design malware to actually fit in with tools that people use regularly so that they are undetected. Um, and they've moved from targeting systems, where well, they still target systems, but now they target humans very, very successfully. And then we have the business context, and the business context means we have a complex regulatory landscape. So it's not just about the GDPR. For those in financial services, we've got the Payment Services Directive 2, which for the first time actually includes not only security requirement, but also authentication requirement. We've got Privacy Shield, as, uh, as Jonathan mentioned. 
We've got PCI DSS, very importantly, in version 3. For those who are familiar with that, that's also very important. Everybody is undergoing or trying to un uh, undertake digital transformation and innovate. And we've got very, very complex infrastructures in the whole of the ecosystems. And of course, added to that for businesses, we've got pressure to contain cost. So we have to look at the organizational considerations for that. Accountability actually means ownership. <coughs> and what does that mean? That means you need to have a responsible person for that. And that is the data protection officer. The GDPR introduces this concept, the accountable person, and there are various requirements around that, such as, you know, must be appointed for at least four years, must be independent, and basically, if you read the details, must be an absolute superhuman as well as being a lawyer. <laughs> so, and the fact is, at least 28,000 DPOs will be needed to meet the GDPR requirement. I don't know where you're going to find them, but you should be looking for them now. So, we've been talking about people and the supply chain, and, and as, as ever, when you look at these things, you start asking yourself, well, regulation and people, is that actually a dichotomy? Do they go together? Well, if you look at people, what do people want? Well, people want convenience and flexibility. People are not really interested about security or privacy. I mean, they might more now because it's in the news. Um, they're not aware of risks on the main. Uh, they will find the path of least resistance to do their job. People don't willingly go to work in the morning and say, I'm going to suck at my job today. They don't do that. They do, I want to do a good job. And if bypassing the security process is going to help me to do that, then that's what I'll do. And that's what happens. That's human behavior. They have, as we've seen, redefined the context of privacy. And they believe on the main that security is not their responsibility. So that's people. Now, what do the regulators try to do? So well, the regulators, they aim to protect people. They want to protect people. They aim to foster competition in the markets. They aim to promote innovation reduce risk, uh, foster better behaviors, uh, and they aim to make organizations more responsible. So these are the two sides of the coin. So if we look at that, protecting people is in fact the common den denominator. Sorry. Protecting people is the common denominator. Managing staff to protect data will protect people as direct transitivity. Uh, and but 75% of incidents are actually related to people. As uh, John mentioned earlier on in his introduction, uh, we're not getting better at it. And in fact, if you look at this uh, piece of news which I picked up last week, employee security hygiene is actually on a steep <coughs> decline. Uh, if we look at some information from uh, that Bible of statistics produced every year in Q1, uh, aka the Verizon Data Breach Investigation Report, which is one of my faves, so I recommend it, 70.7% uh, of, of, of incidents are actually due to miscellaneous errors. 16.3% for insider and privileged misuse, and 15.1% physical theft and loss. I mean, these are not, you know, this is not rocket science. So what I tried to do today is actually revisit the cyber kill chain for you to apply to insider threats and see how we get on with that. So all familiar with the various th uh, steps of the cyber kill chain. First two, I classify as proactive. This is before anything bad's actually happened, but it's badish. Uh, and the last three steps is are reactive. I mean, something happened and I need to react to it to make it good. Obviously, on the left-hand side, it's cheaper. On the right-hand side, it's more expensive. Common sense. So, first of all, phishing. Very, very big problem in terms of cybercrime. So, what actually happens in the cyber kill chain in phishing? So, we've got phishing. Then uh, you have either an attachment or a link, not necessarily email, it can be social media, but generally this is what happens. Then you have a person that is targeted. Essentially, that's your reconnaissance phase of the kill chain. Then 
What happens is that that activity results in altering the behavior of the individual uh, who will use a device, who will then uh, install malware unwit unwittingly, who will then, uh, which will then steal and use credentials. This is actually your initial compromise. 70% of successful breaches start on an endpoint device. So what, what can you do at that stage, remembering that those first two phases are actually the cheapest, where you can have email and social media security, you can have policies, procedures, education, monitoring, governance, uh, and then monitoring, education, governance, incident response, as mentioned earlier on, and so on and so forth, and point security, encryption, tokenization, access control, multi-factor authentication. The color coding here means in green, it's basically process and people. In blue, it's technology. You can do many things in those first two phases at relatively low cost. Then you've got the next phase. Basically, malware is installed, set up command and control, identify, acquire, aggregate the data, the data and bingo, exfiltrate. This is your compromise situation. This is your GDPR breach. So what can you do there? Well, again, policies, procedures, governance, enablement, user behavior monitoring, education, incident response, and continuous improvement, because you need to learn from your mistakes. And then, of course, multi-factor authentication, privilege account management seems to be sorely lacking everywhere patch all the things, uh, server network, application security and monitoring, threat intelligence, data leakage prevention, you're all familiar with that. So this is how you address the phishing threat using the cyber kill chain apply to that particular scenario. And what do you do there? Jonathan mentioned earlier on generally people say, see so, it's your responsibility. No, it's not. It's not, because all the bits in green and orange in there, your data protection officer, your chief data officer, if you have, have one, your CISO, your chief risk officer, HR, legal, PR, marketing, all those guys have a role to play in there. And of course, the blue bits, the CISO and the CIO have to take care of that. But this is, you know, people, process, and technology, as you all know already. Japan's largest travel agency, Fierce data leak impact 8 million users. This is a particular uh, phishing scenario. Belgian bank loses 70 million euro to classic CEO fraud. These are all very recent. Uh, Austrian FACC hit by 47 million do dollar email scam, far as the CEO. Leonie AG, that was a couple of days ago, for those who follow my Twitter account, suffers 34 million pound whaling attack. I mean, those things, I mean, I always like to say they absolutely deserve it. It's lack of governance. Anyway, next one is malicious, malicious behavior. It is not always that an insider is negligent. Sometimes they are actually really malicious. So what happens then? So you've got your tipping point event, whatever that may be. And then the person obviously is going to do something and they alter their behavior. This is your reconnaissance phase. So it's the tipping point event. Personal circumstances, grudge, dare, greed, collusion, all of those things may happen to actually generate the kind of malicious behavior that could actually follow this step. Here, of course, policies, procedures, education, monitoring, governance, enablement, HR have a very big role to play in this. So then you have unusual activity, whatever that may be. Then you have user devices, user accounts, network ac access, whatever they, uh, they need to do. And then they will abuse their privileges. They'll abuse their privileges. That is your initial compromise. They're going to do something they're not supposed to do. So 7.6% 7 of successful breaches are actually caused by privilege abuse. So what can you do there? Again, the same thing, behavioral analytics, endpoint security, data classifications, policies, procedures, education, and all of those good things. 
monitoring governance, access management, and privilege account management. Again, I said not, not enough of that going on. Then they search for data, they capture and hide the data, and bingo, the exfiltrate. That's your compromise situation, that's your GDPR breach. Any time before that is not yet, but you can stop it. Again, same thing as before. And again, same thing as before. These are the guys that should do it. There we are. T-Mobile, uh, Czechoslovakia, Data Leak, Morgan Stanley pays $1 million SEC fine over stolen customer data. And of course, the Panama Papers, which made the news last year extensively. Uh, Greenwich University suffered second, second data breach this year in appar apparent revenge hack by a former student. He was actually a security student, and, uh, and he didn't pass. And he said, well, I'll show you. <laughs> so, and more recently, I think a couple of days ago, uh, retiring, retiring sysadmin fakes cyber attack to get away with data theft. Then the next thing is miscellaneous errors. You know, things you do because, you know, oops. So first bit is your reconnaissance phase. Again, you've got a trigger event, person, alter behavior. Trigger event can be anything. Deadlines, long hours, personal circumstances, lack of security controls, unaware of policy, non-segregation of duties, insufficient governance, and my favorite one, lack of coffee. <laughs> Again, same thing as before. And then you have normal activity. It's very difficult to spot normal activity because it's normal. So then user devices, user account, network access. Then you use your credentials and I'm orange. Uh, dead, uh, so uh, use your credentials and then essentially 8.7% 8, 8 of successful breaches are caused by miscellaneous errors. Uh, same thing as before, and then here we are. Initiate legitimate action, perform legitimate action, cause damage by mistake, that is your compromise situation and your GDPR breach. Uh, omission, data entry, programming error, gaff, disposal error, all of those things that you may do which you're not supposed to do, but it was a mistake. And again, it is the same thing, uh, adding a bit of uh, uh, other things in there in terms of uh, disposal, decommissioning, uh, uh, policies, process control, DevOps, and all of those good things. And hey, Kiddy Care was one of those, uh, and uh, the leak of uh, prison officers' information at the beginning of the year was another one. And very <coughs> recently, uh, beauty site uh, strawberry.net lets anyone read customers' personal information on the net. That's an error, that's a mistake. Same thing as before, all those guys. So, and then you have theft and loss. Again, same thing. Trigger event, person, alter behavior. Same thing as before, it can be anything. And as you can see where it's going, you can use the kill chain to actually do that. 15.1% of these incidents are caused by physical theft and loss. Uh, physical document knowledge or whatever else you may be leaking. Again, the same thing as before. And here we are. We have a compromise situation and therefore a DP GDPR breach. And it's all of those things that you try to protect ourselves from. And again, it's the same thing as before as well. And it's the same thing as before as well. All of those guys need to be involved and you can do it. Laptop breach, there are many in the news quarter of banks data breaches down to lost phones and laptops, Whitehead nursing home, that was early on last week, and uh, more recently, that was yesterday, issues warning on possible data breach, and uh, cooperation is key. So what I've tried to do is actually summarize that for you. You can see there are not many things in there that help you start a, a successful GDPR program, and again, these are the people that need to be involved in doing that. And the two strategies are actually completely complementary and prove that compliance doesn't equal security, but good security will invariably lead to compliance. So 
The next three slides, I actually, I'm going to whiz through because uh, it's just to show you that there are actually science behind that. And it's essentially showing you that on the GDPR, noting the articles, this is all the articles you hit by actually dealing with those things. So access control, same thing again here, and operational control, again, the same things with the article noted. The organizers will actually make those slides available to you online. So, recap. These are the articles that are being hit by all of that. Uh, it's just to show you that some science behind this. I have actually done the same thing with PSD2 and with PCI DSS. It works exactly in the same way. And this is what it means. Essentially, what you already know, it's about people, process, and technology. And these are the people that should be looking at it. So it's about managing the highest risk. Given the reliance on third parties, you know, on cloud, third party vendor breach is still a major cyber security issue in 2016. It's the same thing for the supply chain. As you can see in there, contractual control, procurement control, processing control, and transfer control, and the articles are pertaining to that, and I'm only a couple of minutes away. Uh, and as you can see, uh, another breach here, former vendor inadvertently shared patient health information on the internet. So this is about the supply chain, and more recently, the Scorpion submarines, who have now lost any further orders from India. <coughs> So GDPR implementation, implementation date, May 2018, you can't actually stop the storm, but you can definitely see it coming. Uh, and this is it. So common denominator in 75% of incidents is people, 63% of all data breaches are linked directly or indirectly to third party access. So start of a successful GDPR program, I got to it. Appoint a DPO, full time or otherwise, even though you know if you if you have less than 250 employees, you don't have to. But I suggest you should anyway, um, and ensure cooperation with the various members of the organisation. DPO to establish staff data, data protection program to address insider threats, phishing, whaling, miscellaneous errors, lost and stolen, malicious behaviour. DPO to establish a supply chain review program that looks at procurement processes, security posture and accreditation, contracts, and data location and transfers. So for a successful GDPR program, managing the highest risks is absolutely key. And that's really 